And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer into the temple, the mass coming to us from warmer climates than I am. Although not not that much warmer this time of year, and creator of the upcoming Tactic Legends game for mobile, the one and only Cameron Wills. How are you doing tonight, man? I am doing great. That was quite an intro. Yeah, I I try and if I try and go more over the top, I'm pretty sure I'd get sued by the Buffer family. All right. <laughs> Which I um I don't want to deal with lawsuits. Not because I'm afraid I would I would win or lose, but because I don't want to wear a suit again. <laughs> or or rather wear a suit and tie because my because any time I wear a tie it's gonna feel like I'm being choked. Suits suits look nice sometimes. Yeah. I'd either feel like I'm being choked or feel or feel like I'm having the experience of a LA Chargers fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just say, just saying, that's that's what they that's what they do, inflict pain. <laughs> Very true. But I'd like to start at the humble beginning. Now, Tactics Legends is ver it is very much in the vein of a lot of the greats when it comes to isometric when it comes to isometric um, strategy RPGs. Your Ogre Battle, your Final Fantasy Tactics, your Dis your Disgaea. And and so on. What was your first introduction to that particular style of play? Uh, I think way back on what was it like Sega Genesis Shining Force? I think it was what it was. Mm -hmm. um, Shining Force was I think the first tactical game I ever really played, and then I hadn't really played one again until I want to say Final Fantasy Tactics was my next, and that and that was for uh, PSP is the version that I played. Yeah. And Truth be truth be told, between the original PS One version and the um, War of the Lions version on PSP, I actually prefer the latter. Just that's what I heard. I mean, yeah, you don't have Cloud as a cameo, but I'll be, but if I'm, but if I'm honest, if I'm being honest, by the time I got him, he I everybody else that I had was severely outranking him. Yeah. But. The only the only problem that, the only problem with War of the Lions was the was the um for, was the slowdown issues. That that was pretty well, much like, it. Like lag. Some of the some of the animations w would um would end up would end up slowing to a crawl sometimes. Especially the especially the more elaborate ones, and especially when it came to summons. Yeah. Now. With that, with that kind of thing in mind, would you would you say th it's interesting that you bring up Shining Force since I'd say that one it has a faster pace than some than a lot of other entries in, entries in the genre. Was did the idea for Tactic Legends sprout from ta from the idea of taking strategy RPG and trying to trim the fat, so they say. Uh, exactly. Um, one of one of the pieces that I really liked about War of the Lions on the PSP was the multiplayer component. If you had a friend nearby with the PSP, you could mm -hmm. do some co-op or you can uh, battle each other. Mm -hmm. um, and in these games, you know that's not that's really uncommon. Um, and but when I tried to get some of my friends, you know, to get the game and, and play it so that we could, uh, you know, train up our squads and, and battle each other, uh, which is really the was the most fun part of that game was when I was playing against my friends. Uh, you know, RPGs aren't really for everybody, um, and especially nowadays, you know, a lot of gamers don't really want to sit there and read a bunch of text or click through a bunch of dialogue or everyone skips cutscenes and there's just a lot of, uh, there's a lot of barrier to entry. And so the people that uh, did get the game, you know, they got maybe an hour in and never really picked it up again, uh, I think for those reasons, because, you know, to get to the good, the good stuff, which is the battles, right? The fun, that's really what's fun about uh, the game, at least in my opinion, mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to go through a, a whole bunch of other fluff and, and you can't really just get right into the action. You have to do a bunch of stuff first. And so 
Uh, my idea was to take what was fun about Final Fantasy Tactics and trim out everything else uh, to make it as accessible as possible um, and to lower the barrier to entry to where it can be a game that anybody, even someone who's never played a tactics game or an RPG game, can just pick it up and know what to do and what they're doing and, and have fun you know, playing it uh, without having to sink hours into the game first. Yeah. Now, with that in, with that in mind... I I'd, I'd like to I think it I think it's important to reflect on the fact that art is a response to other art. And I'd like to go through some some of the some of the larger entries whether or not you whether or not you had a fair amount of experience with them, some of the things that you want and some of the things you you wanted to avoid when it came to the whole trimming the fat issue. Yeah. So, I'll start with the one that everybody that Everybody's gonna, everybody's gonna bring up in these conversations, um, Final Fantasy Tactics. Mm -hmm. So with that one, what were what were some of the things mechanics mechanics wise, not narrative wise, that you wanted to avoid that it that it kind of falls into? Um, so in Tactic Legends, uh, I'm getting rid of levels. So you you don't level your characters up. I'm getting ready to rid of jobs, so you don't you know the characters have you know a set class. Uh, there's no you don't have to worry about levels up and experience and stat points and strength and I mean all the all the different stats and stuff that go into it. Um, and I know that you know there are there is an audience of people that love to you know min max and and tweak tweak all those, but I don't really think in the grand scheme of things most people care about that kind of stuff. Um, so I would say I would say those. You know, if we're not talking about the narrative, because obviously the Tactic Legends is a multiplayer only game, or at least initially. Mm -hmm. um, so there will be no single player content. It's literally a PvP game. Um, I'm sort of meshing, you know, I, as far as like how the business model of the game or like the mechanic, like the back end of the game is mm -hmm. I'm basing it on like hero based games, like Heroes of the Storm, Overwatch, Apex Legends. Yeah. I'm sort of taking how easy it is to pick those games up and just play. Um, and then apply, but applying that to the tactic genre. That brings that does bring me to an interesting question, because um, I'm no I'm no stranger when it comes to when it comes to hero when it comes to hero games and a problem that has that that ended up emerging in um in over in Overwatch and a few and a few other games is the issue of characters being played as and not with. Um, Overwatch being the biggest offender of this of this kind of thing of not being able to develop a playstyle with a character, but rather having it, rather picking certain characters because your opponent has rocket has rock and you need paper. Oh, I see. Uh, this isn't at and and on the other end of the spectrum, you have a, you have some you have MOBAs like League and and Dota two where you have way, you have way too many options. When it comes to when it comes to equipment and advancement, um, exactly. Now, even th even though you even though you are building around that he that that hero get that hero game setup, is there going to be some degree some degree of wiggle room when it comes to customizing individual characters? Uh, so the customization you mean outside of cosmetics? Yes. Yeah, so um, the main way that that you'll be able to customize your characters are with the items. Um, and when I say items, there, there, there's no. I'm also getting rid of equipment. There's no. You know, you're not going to find armor and weapons, and the, you're not going to have to worry about equipment. But what I mean by items are the, the consumables. So every character has four uh, item slots, but they're not shared. So each character basically has their own mini inventory. And you're only allowed to bring four items uh, per character, with the exception of one character that has double capacity. But um, otherwise, the the items you bring in are really going to be how you you know that's going to be the extra layer. You know, obviously the team composition is is the most obvious one. Um, but then you know the play style or, or your strategy is really going to be determined by the kind of items that you bring in to the match with you. Um, and I think that's probably the biggest way to customize. Um, I was. I you know I've been spitballing some ideas with um, how the skill system would work, or because I do want there to be some element of 
you know, like, I don't want you to just have all of the skills for every character available to you at the start. So I do want some sort of skill progression, but what that looks like is not really set in stone yet. Um, I do sort of like, you know, like in, in uh, the MOBA games, how like, you know, when you're playing the game, you get EXP and you sort of are presented, uh, you know, three or four options of abilities you can pick every other level. Um, I was thinking of maybe taking something like that and adopting it mm -hmm. so that, you know, uh, maybe you get EXP points. And then when you level up, maybe every other level, you can choose, you know, one out of three new skills that you can learn. And that way you could sort of uh, build out the character down different paths. Maybe you take the tank character and give them more attacker based skills and make them more DPS heavy or, you know, sort of tweak them and towards like, Maybe every character has sort of like a, a path you can go, or maybe you can mix and match, um, but to have it be permanent instead of obviously in mobile games, it's only lasting for the match. Uh, and then obviously having a way to reset the skills uh, with some sort of probably in-app purchase or something like that. But mm -hmm. again, that's not really set in stone. Um, but the main the main thing that is set in stone for sure that you know customization wise is the items and the item system. Uh, mm -hmm. I think will be the biggest one. I g I got gotcha. you now. The other thing, the other thing with that hero model is that a lot of times, the a lot of times when it comes to character abilities, it falls it falls into it falls into a certain formula, a set of a set a set of attack and or uti and or utility abilities. Sometimes two for two, sometimes more, sometimes less, and one ultimate. Um. Usually, usually with cool, usually with costs, cooldowns, and, and the like. Um, mm -hmm. are you gonna be are you gonna be operating under a similar dynamic, or are, is it going to be a bit different on your end? Uh, yeah, I think it'll be pretty similar. I do plan on having ultimate abilities for each of the characters. Um, and then obviously, I, I think they'll have more than you know two or three abilities to choose from. Uh, there'll be there'll be more, and obviously, like I was talking about, you can unlock more. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, I think really what sort of makes them dynamic is. Uh, the quick time events. Uh, I've been playing with so sort of some ideas on, you know, I re I've already implemented a quick time event for basic attacks, whereas that when you go to basic attack, a gauge pops up and there's a couple sweet spots you can hit. One's critical hit going all the way down to a miss, mm -hmm. um, depending on where you land. And I've been playing with the idea of implementing something similar for all of the abilities, but making the quick time event, you know, different. Um, you know, I like, for example, like in games like Among Us, you know, you have all those little mini tasks you got to do, which are essentially just little mini games, mm -hmm. um, essentially turning each ability into its own little mini game where you, you do some sort of action uh, in a small time window. And depending on how well you do that action uh, may determine not only just how powerful the ability is, but maybe the overall effects, like maybe, you know, if you cast a fire spell. Uh, but you hit the sweet spot and whatever that quick time event is, maybe it becomes a spell that hits, you know, every enemy uh, on the team instead of just a single target, you know, something like that. Something, some ways to sort of differentiate the abilities and spice them up um, on a skill basis and not, not so much, uh, you know, as, as, as fun it is, as it is, you know, in RPGs to, you know, sort of plan and strategize out. Um, I, I do want it to be a little bit more interactive than just selecting a, an ability from a menu and watching it watching it play out. Mm. Um, so I did want to add some component that, you know, it's it's not a game breaking component where somebody that's a master of it is going to dominate you, but it's definitely going to add, you know, it's going to add up over time if someone is, you know, really skilled at doing that. I do want it to be one part skill, one part strategy, mm -hmm. um, and you know, try to find a balance between that. Yeah. Um, but again, that part of that part of the game is really the next part of development. I just implemented the the, the camera system and and all really all the, the all the basics in the core of the game are just just finished being implemented. So now I'm really looking at the ability system and starting to nail down how I want that to play out. Um, and I think it's going to just come down to testing and seeing what feels fun. That's that's the main thing is I'm I'm building it around what's I want it to be fun first more than anything, um, mm -hmm. because especially with the PvP game, you need a big player base uh so that's one of the reasons why the game is free but then it also has to be fun right to keep them playing so uh, oh, yeah. that's that's really how i'm structuring it now speaking of the speaking of the free the freeness of it i'll get i'll get to actions in a minute but i want i want to touch i want to touch on that on the on the kickstarter page you mentioned no ads and no and no pay to win ever and 
Believe me, us we here in the temple absolutely despise pay to win mechanics. I've mentioned yeah. on I've mentioned on plenty of times that whoever was the first person to invent loot boxes should probably be subject to a public flogging. There you go. <laughs> um, or key, or keel hall if they're if they're off on the coast. Um, and that's just because I want that's just because I'd want to have them walk the plank, literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of a lot of time there's a bit of dis there's a bit of um, distrust and obfus obfuscation over the last few years regarding what counts and what doesn't count as pay to win, and I call it obfuscation because some companies, especially the Four Horsemen, you know them. Um, try and finagle with the try and finagle with definition confusion to try and sneak stuff in, which has caused some di which has caused a bit of distrust on the matter. But for but in your case, is it a, is it an instance of anything gameplay related? You're gonna have to get you're gonna have to actually earn. Um. Yeah. So, <clears throat> in in general, as like as I was saying, the main business model that I'm following is like Apex Legends, mm -hmm. uh, Overwatch. Uh, so that yeah, while there will be loot boxes, the loot boxes will contain primarily cosmetics. Um, now I say primarily because, and then this is something I'm gonna have to balance. So mm -hmm. I'm not positive. Maybe I don't do this at all, or maybe I do do this. But I wanted to be able to because, like I said, items are gonna be a big way on how you customize. Mm -hmm. However, you're not gonna be able to just, you know, send twenty dollars to the app and buy the best items in the game. Definitely not. Um, however, I do want. I, at least I was thinking of including items in the loot boxes um so and all the items in tactic legends at least the majority of them like i would say 95 percent are consumables so even if someone were to you know get a really good item as soon as they use it in whatever match they decide they want to use it in they no longer have that item so it's not like a, a permanent boost um and, and all the items in the game obviously you can get without spending any money that's mm -hmm. that's not a thing um though primarily loot boxes are going to be for uh you know cosmetics and i do plan on allowing people to purchase in-game currency but even in-game currency sort of has a limit on what you can buy because there will be an in-game item shop mm -hmm. where you can you know use the in-game currency to buy you know more potions and stuff like that mm -hmm. however the inventory that the item shop has is only going to have a limited quantity of the items that it carries and the inventory that the, it carries will cycle every 24 hours um, I'm not sure if you've ever played. Uh, I got an inspiration from that. There's this game called Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links on mobile. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the mechanics in that game is there is a, a, a card trader, I think they call him. Um, and basically, he has at any point in time, you know, maybe one or two really rare cards you can buy from him. And then, you know, maybe five or six, you know, normal to rare items uh, that you could purchase. But once you buy it, you know, he only has like one of each. Um, so doing something similar like that, that way, if you do get lucky and the item shop is selling a rare item, you can't just go drop 20 bucks and buy, you know, 50 of them if he's only selling five, you know, so mm -hmm. um, sort of keeping it th that way so that one, the item shop are randomized for everyone. Like if your item shop is not going to carry the same items that my item shop will. Mm -hmm. So every every player you encounter is most likely going to have a, a unique or different set of items than you. Um, unless they're a longtime player and have just stocked up all tons of items. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, also, like I said, I, I do want to add items to loot boxes, um, but I do want to, you know, be cautious on on what and how much I add because I I do, I, like, I don't want someone to drop $100 and buy, you know, 100 loot boxes and just have an overwhelming amount of stuff that they shouldn't have. So yeah. that's something I'm looking at. I, I, I will, I'm definitely open to the idea of not putting items in loot boxes at all. Mm -hmm. um but because they're all consumable i don't think it's that serious of an issue and because you can't pick and choose which items you want i also don't think it's that much of an issue um unless the rng gods just decide to bless you rng gods blessing blessing you that's that's a laugh <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, as some as somebody who's had to do as somebody who's had to deal with xcom bullshit for years um there's yeah. no such thing as niceness with the rng gods <laughs> But yep. I could see, I could see the, I could see the emer, I could see the emergence of an of another issue. And I'm not sure if this is something you've can, you've considered inter internally, but I could see the issue of the of the ra of the rainy day paradox hap um, happening if if loot boxes are in, are if loot boxes contain those consumables. Mm -hmm. 
Because oh. you've pro you've probably seen this in the past of some of the whole concept of holding on to that to a to that one healing item until for until the end of time or in some in some games. I what if I I can't use one of my ninety nine mega elixirs. What if I need it for later? Yeah. Said during the said during the final boss. <laughs> yep. And I could I could see that I could see that kind of thing happening where where somebody where people where some people are a bit too conservative when it comes to item use because the way you describe it it gives me the vibe that you want people to be using and gaining items fair, fairly consistently. Yeah, and and it's it's that that kind of what you just described is what I would imagine would would be something that would happen because as it being a PvP based game and very focused on you know your rank and moving up in the ranks mm -hmm. I mean that's that's part of that's part of what you have to decide and one of the choices a player has to make is you know I'm maybe they're on the verge of ranking up and they really need to win this next match no matter what so maybe they decide that they want to bring in their best items they don't have a lot of quantity of but they know that they're game changing items that are you know, they're, they're best. Whereas, you know, someone that's at the very bottom of the ranks isn't going to give a shit and it's just, you know, is going to do whatever. And so, you know, the top ranking players are going to have to make that choice of do they want to save uh, the rare items they're finding for, you know, maybe when they move up higher in the ranks and it gets a little bit tougher or do they want to just go balls to the wall and, and you know, go in with it. Um, and that's that's one of the choices they're going to have to make. And, and a big part of that too is because one of the characters, Koji, uh, he's a thief, and he's actually going to be able to steal the other player's items. Mm -hmm. um, so if he, if you have a character that has a rare item, he will be able to steal it from you, uh, and you will not be able to get that item back, um, unless obviously you you win the match and get it back from him in some way. Uh, so you know you do also have that ever present risk of bringing an item with you, never getting a chance to use it because another player takes it from you. Mm -hmm. Now, with that with that in mind, when it comes to the other um, the other issue, I could see I could see happening, and this is entirely dependent on what I on what items actually are going to bring, because I'm pretty sure you don't want items outstripping what character what character abilities can do. Is the issue of Nova Ing? Is that? Um, and gr granted, Nova Ing is more of a problem in tabletop, but it can occur in competitive games. And that is just waiting until you can get you can get your strongest abilities, and then just du and then just dumping all of them. Yeah. Oh. But I get I get the feeling that the goal that that the goal that you have with I with items is that they enhance a playstyle, but don't oh, but um don't override it. Uh, yes, I mean, kind of. So there are so, so I, I have probably uh, I have a list of maybe like 75, I think, items that I've come up with so far. Mm -hmm. And I have created um, one item that essentially counters every character on the roster. For example, as I was just saying on how Koji can steal um, an item from you. Uh, you know, he is a, a dog type character. So what I've an item I've come, I've come up with is the tennis ball. Mm -hmm. uh, and and basically how that works is you throw that shit and Koji. So if he's close to you or you know he's about to steal something from you, uh, you basically throw the ball to maybe the other side of the map, and that forces him to you know chase after it. And now he's further away from you, and he's you, you know you bought yourself some time. Mm -hmm. um, similarly, uh, there's you know Sakura. She's an enchanter. She has you know music that she plays. Uh, there's an item called earplugs uh, that essentially makes you know her one of her one cast on that target character as long as the item is in your inventory uh null and void and then it breaks on that on that cast mm -hmm. um but these these character countering items are uh rare tier in that you know you're not gonna the idea is you're not gonna have you know a, a, a full stock of 100 of these these are going to be you know rare items and they're not going to be uh that common so you do have to pick and choose you know when you decide you want to use them yeah when it comes to when it comes to rarity this is this is one thing that a lot of companies that do use loot box have been have been um have been have been hemming and hawing about in ter in terms of why they don't do it and that is putting up the odds of certain rarities 
is that something that you've considered about whether or not you'd put how how likely someone is to get um, items of certain rarity? Um, no, I, I don't really plan on publishing it like on an item, on a per item basis. I do like, for example, on Apex, if you go to look at a loot box, it'll say what your probability is of getting a rare or a, you know, legendary. So I vaguely like that. I'm open to it, but yeah. not on an individual item basis. Yeah. Because well, obviously there are going to be some items in the same rarity tier that are better than another in, in maybe a small way. Yeah, I was, I was suggesting more in, t more in tier, not in individual item. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Tier tier wise, like yeah, like if if you get a loot box, you know, you'll know, you know, there's different loot boxes. Obviously, too, you could get a standard loot box or a you know rare loot box, legendary, whatever it is, um, that that have different probabilities of different kinds of items dropping. And I think it's fair, you know, especially if these are items that people could spend money on, that they at least know what their chances are of getting that type of item. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do like the mechanic that Apex has too. I think it says like, uh, you know, you're guaranteed a you know legendary for example out of one out of every like 10 loot boxes or one out of every five or something like that just in case the rng gods aren't blessing you mm -hmm. you'll have a bad streak where you don't get you know you only get normal items even though you bought a legendary loot box yeah um another having issue. some sort of mm -hmm. yeah. another issue that i've seen when it comes to loot boxes is duplicate issues of get of Opening one up and it's a bunch of th it's a bunch of duplicates, so the so it ends up being a waste. But I'm guessing since since you ha since items are consumables in this regard, that you wouldn't yep. have this is you would you'd be sidestepping that issue to an extent. Exactly. I mean, and you wouldn't be able to get duplicate cosmetics. Obviously, you get it once, and now that that base that cosmetic is out of the loot table. Um, and you know, I do plan on, you know. With with games with this business model, there always has to be new content, new skins, new voice lines, new stuff like that coming out. Um, so hopefully, the amount of content will be enough that no one gets everything, at least in a in in a time frame that is that doesn't make sense. Um, but yeah, exactly like what you said, because they're all consumable. You, there's never going to be an issue of oh, I already have that item, I don't want it, uh, because all of the items are have some sort of use or utility. Um, and the more you use them, obviously, the less items you have. So you're always going to need more. That's something you're always going to have to replenish. Yep. Now, when it comes to when it comes to the action economy dur during encounters, um, mm -hmm. I think you I think you mentioned on the page that you have that you have a, a that you have an action point system. Yeah. Um, is it is it a is is it a case where, where um that where all all roads are going to point to a, or all roads are going to point to action points even, for say casters, a caster using spells and someone using a physical special attack is still going to cost AP. Yeah, so one of my favorite games is uh, Divinity Two: Original Sin. Mm -hmm. uh, great game, and it it has a similar system uh, of AP regardless. So in Tactic Legends, there is no MP. You literally have your health and you have your action points. Mm -hmm. um and you're actually you, you, re, you replenish one action point every turn uh and so you can hold a total of i think i have it's either six or eight mm -hmm. action points at the moment um and so you know more powerful abilities are obviously going to cost more action points so you have to decide you know do i want to save up my action points and just do normal attacks so i can do you know use my powerful ability or do i want to shoot off you know some lesser abilities uh you know for for that effect so yeah. Um, that is the, that is the general idea behind the the system. Yeah. Now on the page it says that moving, basic attacks, and item use don't cost AP. Um, in the right. So, so with with that in with that in mind, would it be a case where somebody could move and then you, and use a AP and use an AP ability, or is it a case where you've got to choose between the two because even with that action point system, you only have one action per character. Uh, no, you can you can move and use uh, use an action, mm -hmm. and you can also use an item. An item doesn't take uh, an action point that obviously just consumes your item, and you only have four of those. So, yeah. uh, so during one turn, you can move, you can use an item, and you can use either an attack or an ability. Mm -hmm. But a after you've used that attack or ability, that's it for that for that character for the round. Uh, yes, yeah. I mean, uh, unless there's nothing else you could do, like you could. 
in theory attack and then is if you haven't used an item or moved yet then you can move or use the, an item um, mm -hmm. But it, normal basic attacks don't take any AP. Those are just normal actions. It's only abilities that will will take your AP. Yeah. Now you're. I guess you're, you could call it more so ability points than action points. Now you already mentioned that you plan that you plan on putting in a, a QTE system when it comes to when it comes to attacks and the like. Um, was a, was that a means to try and mitigate the the issue of RNGs that can happen in these kind of games? Uh, yeah, that and because it, it seems weird to me that, you know, you you throw an attack and then you roll the dice and maybe you get a critical, maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. um, I would much rather it be skill based in that you choose an attack and then you have to do some sort of action in a skillful way. Uh, and that will determine, you know, what sort of bonuses you receive or not. Um, mm -hmm. And that way it's it's more player controlled, but obviously it has to be hard enough to where... It's not going to be easy, obviously, for someone to get a critical every time. Um, and so in that, I did add some variety into the the programming. So yeah. um, the sweet spots, for example, are always in a different place every time. It's randomized. Mm -hmm. So you'll, you won't be able to memorize where the sweet spots are. Um, also, the speed at which these gauges move is also randomized between a set range. So uh, sometimes it'll be super fast. Sometimes it'll be super slow. So you can't memorize the timing either. So the position and the timing are both randomized um and then for example on the attack meter that i already have implemented the meter only bounces up up and down twice mm -hmm. so you don't really have a lot of time to to really time out where this where the stuff is you have to you do have to act pretty quickly mm -hmm. um or else it defaults to an action that at best is a normal attack but at worst is a miss um mm -hmm. so the possibility of a critical or a max damage attack is off the table if you let it default yeah. um and that also changes based on position. So the idea is if your character is standing behind the enemy, um, maybe the gauge moves slower or maybe the sweet spots are larger. I haven't decided yet. I haven't really tested that out. But that was the general the idea behind it was that positioning was going to play into the QTEs in that, you know, if, if you take a better position, uh, you'll be able to have a better chance basically of getting a more potent attack. Mm -hmm. Between the two, I honestly think... Um, cha changing the changing the duration bet between shifting um, colors might be a bet might be a better option than altering the speed because if it's too because an alteration of speed is get uh, is is something that has a higher likelihood of throwing someone off the rhythm. Yeah, I can see that. Um. Yeah, yeah, that's something we we can just we're just gonna have to test. I haven't really implemented that piece of it yet. Uh, while the QT is in there. Um, it, the variation between if you're behind a character or not hasn't been put in yet. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something hard to put in, but that's something I just have to put in and play around with and, and get the f kind of feel for it. In a weird roundabout way, it kind of reminds me of the Shadow Hearts trilogy. I haven't played Shadow Hearts, but I did hear that it's very similar. It reminds a few people of Paper Mario. I never played it, but I guess Paper Mario had a similar mechanic. I can see Paper Mario to, to an extent... But Shadow Hearts is the bigger one for me because of the Judgment Ring system, which actually had dif actually had differing degrees of effect. There was a, there was a wider amount for a, for a stronger hit and a smaller for a hit and a and a smaller amount for a critical, um, as well as well as di as well as differing speeds and the like. Um, gotcha. Whereas some whereas something like something like. Pay with something like Paper Mario, I can see it, but there's a there's a few too many moving parts for me to make that comparison. I, I haven't played either, so I'm, I'm unfamiliar with either. Mm -hmm. um, if you do, um, just stick with just stick with anything up to Thousand Year Door, and you'll be fine. After that, things get jank. <laughs> All right. Um, now, when it comes now, when it comes to the when it comes to the the um, roster that you've got, that you've got. I'd like to go. I'd like to go into what what you've presented and kind of get a feel for what their party role will be and what they're gonna excel at and what they're not gonna excel at. Yeah. And I'd like to start at the top with Chip, the tortoise. Yes. All right. So, uh, so he is your stereotypical sort of tank character, um, mm -hmm. as you would imagine a tortoise would be. His movement is not going to be very good. Uh, his speed, and when I say speed, I mean his turn priority is basically the slowest. 
mm-hmm. um, and his range isn't the greatest. Um, however, he does obviously have some of the highest defense. Uh, he does also have higher HP. Um, and his kit, at least the idea that I have for it is uh, I really like uh, Final Fantasy's sort of cover abilities in that he's going to be able to have a ranged ability where he could select uh, a teammate mm-hmm. and essentially put a cover type barrier on that player so that he's the one that absorbs the damage at his defense rating. Um, mm-hmm. And that sort of plays into his defense and his, his boosted HP uh, because he's not going to be able to get up in someone's face. Um, but he is he's definitely not going to be a weak character. So he does he's going to have some power behind his attacks. Mm-hmm. It's just the movement uh, and his turn priority is so low that you're really going to have to think about how you're going to want to do that. Um, and you also have to remember if you're covering your, your teammates, he is absorbing some damage. So he can, uh, you know, take damage, um, I guess, more than than other characters. Uh, but yeah, he's he's basically your, your tank character. Mm-hmm. So next, Koji. Yeah, he is. He was actually the first the first character uh, I designed. He's actually based on uh, my dog. I have a I have a Shiba Inu, and his name is Go Figure Koji. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got the I got the idea. For, so he's a thief. I got the idea from that because uh, Koji, my dog, he is he's always stealing my socks and and stuff and and running with it. He loves to play keep away. That's mm-hmm. like his favorite game. He doesn't play fetch. He plays I had the ball and I chase me and try to get it from me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's where his his sort of kit came from. Uh, He's like I said, he's gonna have an, an ability where he could steal items from other players. Uh, really, most of his kit is gonna be centered around that. Um, while he is a DPS character, he's gonna be kind of one of the the weaker DPS characters. Mm-hmm. Um, but he is also the fastest. So his turn priority, as of right now, is is the fastest. He he goes first above everybody. Um, he also has really great movement. So he his, you know, he's able to move a lot of spaces. Um, and I did want to give him some sort of uh, speed based abilities, maybe centered around lightning. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had an idea. If you're familiar with the Naruto franchise, oh, I am. Um, yeah, Minato has his his uh, vanishing uh, Raijin, I think it's called, um, where he throws his little kunai and teleports to it. That that's an, an ability yeah, the, I, I did want to. Yeah, the flying yeah. thunder god. Yeah, exactly that that. So uh, I had an, an ability thought out where he, uh, Koji throws his kunai, uh, sort of teleports to that space, and then every. Uh, enemy in that sort of line that he traveled gets hit with maybe some lightning damage or something like that. Um, um, but if, it, I, if I can make a counter offer yeah. when it comes to that, um, mm-hmm. I'd I'd can I can especially given how especially given that kind of reference, um, yeah. this might it might be a golden opportunity to let Ko, to let Koji lean into a bit of a um, trapper. I e I see I, that. I, I can see that. I mean, uh, another ability that I had, you know, jotted down was sort of like smoke bombs in that maybe like an area of effect kind of uh, blind mm-hmm. that lasts on the on the actual environment itself. So maybe a certain amount of spaces has, you know, that sort of smoke for a certain amount of turns and any character in that in that smoke is, you know, has less accuracy or yeah. uh, something like that. Yeah. Now, next is Sakret, the, encha- the Enchantress. Yeah, so she, um, so she's your your primary, uh, you know, sort of support character. Um, doesn't do a lot of damage, but she will be the one that you would expect uh, would be healing and buffing your team. Um, with her ultimate ability being able to charm an enemy uh, character and take control over them for X amount of turns. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as how her her songs work, mm-hmm. um, I didn't really want to go with like a. You know, almost like a cure spell where you know you, I just I'm casting a heal spell on this character. Mm-hmm. I did want to make it maybe a little bit more, uh, maybe area of effect based. Mm-hmm. So in order to receive the heal, you have to be standing next to her. Um, maybe her songs last, you know, maybe two turns, for example, and that way characters can have a chance to sort of move and and play. Um, I haven't really, obviously, had a chance to test and play that out yet, but I would. That's sort of the idea I was thinking with her. Um, and that she's not just like a like a mage where she's standing all the way in the back and just throwing out magic at you, but she's involved and close by to the team. Um, that way, you know, she she is sort of counterable, and that you could focus her because she does have to be next to her her teammates to uh, to you know give those those heals and, and buffs out. Mm-hmm. Um, but that also plays it to her kit too, because you know once you get close enough to her, she should you should be in range of her being able to charm you and and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Oh. 
Now next would be Sprig, who it who you described as the mage. Yeah. Yeah, Sprig is, is basically your stereotypical uh, black mage kind of character. Mm -hmm. um, he does have sort of a, a special passive in that, you know, being a, a toad. Um, he does have poisonous skin, so melee attackers uh, that hit him will take, uh, you know, a poison debuff on them. Um, but he himself doesn't have, uh, obviously, very much HP or defense. Um, and while his horizontal movement isn't that great, his vertical movement being a toad is is very good. So he can get to the high ground. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot a lot better than most other characters will be able to uh, yep. which will position him you know to uh, get extra bonuses from his magic yeah, and so, um given the, given the mage aspect i'm guessing that some that some of his spells lean more area of effect yeah yeah he definitely i definitely plan to give him area of, of effect type type spells mm -hmm. and that that's kind of what i was what i was saying earlier and that i was thinking that you know maybe he has you know a fire spell for example that's single target but if you hit that sweet spot, now it becomes area of effect kind of thing. Yeah. Um. With that, with that in with that in mind, next would be Urbis, the Lancer. And as an aside, dragoons have always been one of my favorite one of my favorite class archetypes in um, yeah. Final Fantasy. So, i've I've got a few I've got a few I've got a few assumptions when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to this particular approach. Yeah. So. I'll, I'll get the obvious out of the, out of the way. Can he jump? <laughs> I d actually did not have any plans for him to jump. Well, I, I do really like the dragon class for sure. Mm -hmm. I do like lancers. Um, I you know I did want to make them sort of unique, and I was thinking you know what, what sort of you know what sort of pass can I take with that? And so he's he's kind of while he is a, a melee damage dealer, uh, he does have some elemental. Uh, you know, ice magic in his kit that sort of mixes, mm -hmm. sort of like a mix of a melee and a caster. Um, you know, Sprig is going to be very fire-based. In fact, at the edge of his staff, um, if you've seen the concept art, he has yep. a little jar that's actually filled with fireflies mm -hmm. uh, as his thing. So his his magic is more fire-based. Uh, and so to, you know, sort of balance that out, um, we got Irbis, who's got the, the sort of the ice magic mm -hmm. um, in his in his lance. So uh, as of right now, he he does have uh, more range than any other melee. He can basically attack from two tiles away instead of one. Mm -hmm. um, and outside of that, I just plan most of his abilities and attacks to be uh, centered around slowing the enemy, whether that be you know lowering their speed, aka turn priority, mm -hmm. or uh, you know freezing them in place uh, to allow your other teammates to you know follow up. Um, is really going to be what what his kit focuses around mm -hmm. um, is just the extra little extra melee range. And being able to sort of debuff the enemy. Yeah. Um, given given the fact that you want to go with ice with um, these ice effects being able to slow them, would it also affect their movement speed? Is that is that something you've considered? Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, any anything related to movement, turn priority, the range at which you can move, mm -hmm. um, if you're able to move at all, is is anything that you would imagine an ice type ability to maybe possibly affect. Um, is sort of the the vein that I'm going down with him. Yeah. Um, now next is Armora, who is do, who's doing the good old, who's doing the good old fashioned so sword and board. Although the although those um pl the although that ha that head and that hair equivalent could probably be a weapon in and of itself. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, she's based on uh, the pangolin. Uh, animal, um, kind of inspired by you know like Pokemon, like Sand Shrew kind of kind of deal. Mm -hmm. And so she, uh, she is a, another tank type character, as you would imagine. Um, but one of her uh, sort of you know her main play style is going to be able to displace enemies. So she's essentially going to be able to curl up into a ball and roll into enemies, which may knock them back a certain amount of spaces or knock them into a position. Um, so you're, she's really more uh, strategical in that you could set up other plays by knocking the enemy, you know, where you want them to be. You could essentially place the enemies where you want them to be using her uh, abilities like like that. I um, mean, of course, she could also you know curl up into a ball for her own personal defense. Um, but the main idea behind her kit is is to knock enemies around. Yeah, I I remember when I'd see these kind of builds when I would do, when I would do D and D sessions, and I'd always call these builds um, bully builds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, now next is Ozaru, which I'm immediately going to have bias for because monk. 
<laughs> there you go. And monks are always a, are always a tricky class to implement in the in these sort of in these sort of systems because they're because they're, they're um kind they're kind of a they're kind of a middle ground archetype. And it also it's hard to, it's hard to it's hard to demonstrate combos in a turn based system. Yeah. Um, so with with his kit, uh, the way I I envisioned him playing is more actually of well obviously as a monk he he's more of a berserker type class in that the the closer he gets to death essentially the more powerful he becomes. Um, Ozaru is is sort of a a, a a shout out I guess to the Dragon Ball franchise mm -hmm. um, and you know the Great Golden Ape and and all those all those things. Yeah. Um, and and that's that's sort of the the way I envisioned him playing out. He does have higher HP because you know being a berserker and, and having his his damage uh, be based on his current HP. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, his, his defense is going to be low, but he he count, counters that by uh, having you know a higher HP pool. Um, and he is going to be essentially the most powerful of the melee DPS mm -hmm. um, at the cost of having obviously the the lowest range um, and having most of his damage come from the fact that he has to be, you know, hurt in some some way, shape, or form. Um so so yeah, that's that's so that was sort of the idea between between that character. Mm -hmm. Um have you given consideration to the idea that he that he's one of the few who attacks who attacks multiple times? Uh yeah, actually between him and Koji, because you know Koji has the two kunais, mm -hmm. um and obviously him being a monk has his two fists. Um I was I was I, ideally uh was I was going to have those two characters um, do that basically? They, you know, you have two two basic attacks, uh, mm -hmm. whereas all the other characters have one. Uh, but how I wanted to implement that, I wasn't sure. Like, does that mean that you have two quick time events and their each attack is basically its own independent? Um, as of right now, I have it programmed where the animation shows them attacking twice, but you just get one, you know, sort of damage number at the end, uh, and you only have one quick time event. But that may that may change. I'm not I'm not sure. Um. If I can make a suggestion, consider the idea of having code instead of of focusing more on multiple targets. Um, I.e., Ozaru could Ozaru could ha could target multiple could target multiple enemies um, in melee range and Koji um, at ra at range. One QTE just just that. again yeah. just against two targets, especially since um, he. Given given his effects, he's somebody who who Ozaru is going to be someone who wants to get right into the thick of it. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, uh, those so uh, the first five characters that we talked about were the the essentially the initial five. Those are your starting five. Those are the characters that you start with in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas the uh, the five latter characters are all you have to unlock those. They're unlockables. Mm -hmm. So I haven't really flesh them out as far as their concepts that much. Mm -hmm. uh, so what these next five characters can do is still totally up in the air. Yeah. Um, so gi given that it's up in the air, I'd, li I'd like you to go into what you, into the kind of, the kind of goal that you have with, the, with the next batch. And yeah. the first one, of course, is Tunji. Oh yeah. So, uh, so if, um, he's really, the main idea between him, uh, is the chemist class in Final Fantasy Tactics. Very, very similar. Um, he's the character that I mentioned that is going to have double the item capacity. Uh, so he can carry eight items into a match with him instead of four. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he, he is a support class type character, so his damage is definitely not going to be anything impressive. But mm -hmm. another really good passive that he has is being able to use items from a range. I think in Tactics, the ability was throw. Yep. Um, whereas his, his basically his passive is throw. So... Any item, whereas any other character, you know, you only you have a very limited range on the, on on how you can use the item. And it's mostly just self cast or one tile away. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas you know he will be able to essentially shoot items uh, using his slingshot and use them from a distance. Um, so not only can he carry more items, but he has a unique ability of being able to use them uh, from much further away than any other character. Mm -hmm. Now next would be Itza, the se the samurai. Yeah. Now, the funny thing about his name is that if you've ever seen the Star Wars meme of it's a trap, mm -hmm. uh, that's where the, that's where Itza came from. Is that the <laughs> reason why at... you had him be a koi? 
<laughs> well, he, he, the idea was a, was a koi first, and my friend actually sent me the meme, and I was like, because I didn't have a name for him, I just had the artwork, mm -hmm. and I was like, you know what, we're going with that Itza. Yeah. Um, but he is a DPS samurai character. Mm -hmm. um, he is, you know, there there will be environmental effects uh, in the game. There will be water and you know rain and stuff like that. Um, and so I do plan on giving him some sort of maybe it's a movement buff or something like along those lines uh, when in. Um, a water type environment, um, but he is, you know, a DPS, a fairly strong one. Um, and I did plan on giving him sort of a kit that centers around countering, uh, maybe when characters walk by him or attack him, he, you know, has some sort of counter um, type ability. But that was really as as far as I really thought into that character. It's de it's definitely something I is definitely something I could I could I could see. Um, in the, in that regard i think in that regard i think i think the i think it i th i think that i think someone like that would be the perfect opportunity to steal from the whole attack of opportunity dynamic that d and d has had for the longest time of just just making the immediate area around him a ni a nightmare not ju not yeah. just not just not just counterattacking when pe when when people try and hit him or get or get close but also a means of penalizing when they try and get away from you. Uh, are you still there? Yeah. Like, uh, I think, uh, okay, you're, you're cutting out for a second. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, in, as far as like penalizing, um, I think that that's the last thing I heard from you. I had said, I said not just penalizing when, when someone tries to hit him or gets close, but also making that it's hard for enemies to get away from him when, when they when they decide to get in melee. Oh yeah, I can, I can see that for sure. Mm -hmm. And we'll we'll definitely be playing with that, seeing um, seeing what makes sense there. Yeah. Um. And next would be Rin, the ar the archer, and I'm get I'm guessing, I'm guessing this would be Trick Arrows the character. <laughs> Trick Arrows, I'm I'm unfamiliar with what that is. Um. When when you have a when you have a archer type character in in certain say comic books they'll have they'll they'll have a quiver with with different air, with different arrowheads for different kind of effects both green oh, arrow yeah, yeah. and hawkeye have that kind of thing going. Gotcha. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, that was that was the concept on her is that uh, instead of you know a mage she is sort of like a fusion of a mage and an archer in that she has different elemental arrows you know, mm -hmm. fire ice wind lightning um, and obviously up front in in melee range she's basically worthless and it's extremely vulnerable mm -hmm. um but she's gonna play similarly to um basically almost like a black mage in that you know she's gonna be she has more she has more utility i think than a black mage um mm -hmm. in exchange for a little bit less damage um but that's sort of the concept behind her is she's she's obviously a ranged character um and she has you know different elemental abilities uh that she can you know use for different situations yeah now, given given what you've mentioned about play and counterplay, would you say would you say that a chunk of the design with Tactic Legends leans a little bit into the the kind of move and counter move thing you'd see in a card game? Um, I'm not sure. I don't. I I want to say I, I want to say no, but uh, because I really haven't really implemented the abilities quite yet, I haven't really had a chance to to play that out so much. Um. The main, I, the main idea was, uh, you know, there are, there's obviously going to be synergies between certain characters, um, and it, it doubles up when you factor in the different variety of items that there are, because uh, maybe, you know, maybe one team comp doesn't really make sense unless you have a certain amount of items or, you know, certain kinds of items um, that really sort of play off their strengths or whatever strategy you have. Uh, so my idea was to sort of just create all sorts of different kinds of pieces to the puzzle and then allowing players to sort of mix and match things and, and find um, play styles that I never even thought of uh, by mixing and matching these things. Mm -hmm. Now with that, with that in with that in mind, you'd also mentioned um, you'd also mentioned dailies on the Kickstarter page and would those, would those be um, bot matches or something like that? Something to something to, and furthermore, would you have, something so that people can practice their particular kit um so uh for the first part of your question it, it wouldn't be against bots it would be they're just like little tasks um mm -hmm. you know a lot of a lot of mobile games have these 
uh, where maybe it's like win three matches and you get, you know, an extra, you know, 100 gold or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or it's just like it's just like a series of several sort of mini quests or challenges that you could do. Um, that'll just be various different things. Do X amount of damage or win win a game without, you know, losing a character or, you know, just little little sort of challenges like that. Mm -hmm. um, that'll get, reward you with bonus items and currency. Um, as far as practice matches, I did plan on adding a, a friendly practice match that you can run um, almost like a quick play sort of thing, whereas mm -hmm. it's not competitive at all and you don't lose any items. Uh, at the end of the match, you get all the items back, um, but you don't you don't really gain, uh, you know, you don't, you, if there is going to be sort of progression, you don't really gain any EXP or progression for them. Mm -hmm. um, and the rewards that you get for doing practice matches will be very minimal, if any. Uh, it's literally it's just simply to play for fun um and just sort of practice you know whatever it is that you want to practice out mm -hmm. versus another player yeah now with that with that kind of thing in mind when it comes to the when it comes to the bat when it comes to the um battle pass ideas that you have both battle and legend passes um mm -hmm. i've seen battle passes in pl in plenty of other games and and sometimes they can they can reduce Ga they can reduce a game to busy work, which is an which is an yeah. issue with that particular system where you're not getting enough XP. Um, Halo Infinite is having that problem these days, although I th although I think they're making t steps to fix it. But when it comes to your t your take with Battle Pass, you this is I'm guessing you want to make it that the amount of experience you get is reasonable. Yeah, I, I really like the pacing of um, Apex Legends Battle Pass. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you, you do obviously have to sink quite a minute, about amount of hours into the game in order to max it out. Um, but it's not unreasonable. Where if, if you're just playing casually every day, as long as you're playing, you know, you'll you'll hit it, you'll hit it basically. Um, and so finding that balance is is going to be key. But I do, you know, want it, you know, to reward the players that put a good amount of time into the game with uh, with items. Um, and as far as you know, the differences between the two battle passes. And just how the battle pass system I envision, how I envision it to work. Uh, whereas most games, it's a seasonal battle pass. Um, but mm -hmm. I think the way I, I want to go with this, and the, the main way I plan on ma uh, monetizing this game, is making the battle passes 30 day, uh, 30 day battle passes, um, and having them be a subscription model. So you know, maybe it's five dollars per month. Every 30 days, your battle pass refreshes. So you have 30 days, regardless of when you get the battle pass or not, um, and that battle pass will will fill up with uh, maybe a, a random set of items. So everyone's battle pass is different. Uh, everyone's time on their battle pass is different. And it resets every 30 days if you choose to go with that subscription uh, legend pass. Um, but also making it uh, sort of uh, incentivizing and rewarding other players who maybe don't want to spend for that battle pass. And so one uh, concept I, I really like and I want to roll with is that if you have a legend pass and you play versus someone who doesn't, giving some sort of bonus to the player who doesn't as far as maybe they get an extra item or two at the end of the match that they wouldn't have gotten. Um, so that way, it's not just the player that paid that's benefiting, mm -hmm. but all players that they play against uh, will be benefiting in some way. Mm -hmm. Now, with that, with that in mind, do you have, do you have plans on put on doing a, on doing any sort of um, betas down the road? Uh, yeah, so as of right now, um, there is an, a closed alpha test that I give access to anybody in the Discord, basically, who wants it, um, can test. I think we have a little bit over 20 people that um, are part of the alpha test, and the game is definitely playable. I, you can match up with another player and play a game to completion um, right now. So uh, the the plan is is just to keep it closed until uh, really the next the next step of my agenda is... The abilities characters obviously need abilities um and then uh implementing the uh like the item shop and stuff like that i already have the system for using items um but really sort of like the back end like menu management where you're actually equipping your characters with the items and, and you know building out your team and stuff like that i haven't implemented yet so once those two things you know those two big things get ticked off um that's around the time i plan on uh pushing out an open beta to the public where uh, we really get to you know test with hundreds of hopefully thousands of people can jump in and play. Um, I've collected you know about three thousand beta signups so far, so there's a good amount of people that you know have interest and want to play the game. Um, but the people that are really into it and are really contributing, you know, people in the Discord, I'm letting them test it now with me, 
uh, sort of iron out the, the, the obvious kinks. Um, but yeah, beta, you know, beta, my goal is at some, some point in February, uh, it's, it's kind of an ambitious goal, but you know, we'll, we'll see. I've made, you know, I've only been working on this game since January of last year and I've already implemented a lot of, a lot of things. So I think February could, could be doable. Um, and so if it all goes according to plan, uh, that is when I plan on having an open beta to the public. Mm -hmm. Well, I will, I will certainly look forward to seeing how that, how that develops and, what sort what sort of meta will will be born from it because with enough time a meta is born that's just how this works i know Ka yep. i know kaplan said that they didn't plan on having a meta with overwatch but the lie detector term determined that was a lie yep. <laughs> but with that said i would like to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness at play here. Of course, I appreciate you having me on. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. I just finished my beer as you said that. <laughs> and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>